Okay, in this video we are going to talk about optimization and specifically a problem involving a Norman window, which is a very common calculus problem. Um, and once you know what a Norman window is, you'll look around and probably see some of them in everyday life. So let's take a look at the problem. A Norman window has the shape of a rectangle surmounted by a semicircle, and I'm going to draw one in a second. If the perimeter of the window is 30 feet, find the dimensions of the window so that the greatest possible amount of light is admitted. Um, and I'm going to interpret that to mean the maximum area. Um, so let's see if we can uh, draw this thing. So it's a rectangle surmounted by a semicircle. So I'm going to start with a rectangle because I feel like, you know, I know how to draw that. Um, but since I'm going to put a semicircle on top, instead of uh, making this a solid line, I'm going to make it a dashed line. So that's my rectangle. And then on top of that, I'm going to put a semicircle. All right, so that's not so bad. And now what I want to do is I want to kind of label this up. So I'm going to say that this is x. Um, and you'll see that uh, as I do the problem, that might have been a bad choice. And I'm going to actually do the problem again, making a different choice. Um, but I'm going to say that is x. Um, and this is y. And then uh, I have to deal with the semicircle somehow. So there's the radius. Uh, but if you look at it, um, the perimeter here uh, is just going to be two y's. Uh, plus one x plus half of the circle. So uh, the circumference of a circle is two pi r. So I'm just going to need pi r. So plus pi r, and all of that will add up to 30. But what do I, I have? Three variables, which is uh, probably way too many. Uh, so if I look at this, if I go straight across, that's the diameter of the circle. So that's two r. So you can see that two r is actually just equal to x, which means that um, r is x over two. So I can use that to simplify this. So I get 2y plus x plus uh, pi times x over 2 is equal to 30. And uh, now let's see what we need to like actually do in the problem. So we're looking for the greatest amount of light. So I want to maximize, as I said before, I'm interpreting that to mean the maximum area. So the area is going to be, well, it's x times y and then half of the circle, and half of a circle, a circle is pi r squared for the area, so I need pi r squared divided by two. So I have a function here that's a function of x, y, and r. I can definitely get rid of uh, the r because I know r is equal to x over two, so that's kind of done. Um, but since that puts another x in the problem, I think I'm gonna get rid of y. So I'm gonna take uh, this equation and solve it for y. So 30, then I can subtract x, subtract uh, pi x over two, and then divide by two. So that's not looking very clean, uh, but that's okay, because I'm just gonna substitute and see what happens anyway. So area as a function of just x, so I'm replacing y with this thing I just found. So 30 minus x minus pi x over two, all over two, um, plus there's a pi over two, and then r is equal to x over two, so the quantity x over two, and then square it, uh, okay, so far so good. So what I'm going to do is uh, kind of simplify a a little bit before I take a derivative. So I'm going to take out a one half and then distribute x. So I get 30x minus x squared minus pi over 2x squared. And then uh, this remaining thing here, I have pi over 2, x over 2 squared. So that's going to be uh, pi. Uh, so pi over 2 and then x over 2 squared is x squared over 4. So this is over 8 and then x squared. Now I want to find the derivative. Some kind of nice things happen, I guess, while I find the derivative. So uh, I'm also going to, well, no, I'm not. All right, let's let's just do it. So it's 1 half the quantity. The derivative of 30x is 30 minus 2x uh, minus the 2's cancel here, and I just get pi x. Close that. And then pi over 8x squared, the derivative is pi over 4x. Okay, that's not so bad. Uh, here I'm going to distribute, just to clean it up a little. So I, was, I wasn't sure if I was going to clean up A or if I would clean up A prime. It's almost always easier to clean up A prime because uh, the power rule makes things simpler. Uh, but it doesn't matter when you do it, you'll get the same result. I'm going to combine uh, some like terms here. So 15, I'm just going to make it minus x and then uh, that's minus two pi over four plus pi over four is minus pi over four x. Okay, so I have a prime. Uh, now I'm trying to maximize, right? So I wanna set this equal to zero and I wanna solve. So what I'll do is uh, 
let's say like 15, I'm moving the x stuff to the other side, so it's equals x plus pi over 4x. And then uh, get a common denominator over here. So just trying to like clean this up a little bit because the answer is kind of gross. Uh, so x is 60 over 4 plus pi. Okay, so I think that that is what x is. I need to show that this actually gives me a uh, maximum, right? Because I'm trying to optimize this thing. So I'm gonna use the second derivative test. I only have one critical point. So if you have one critical point and that critical point is a max, a relative maximum, it must be the absolute maximum. If you have one critical point and it's a relative minimum, it must be the absolute minimum. Uh, that's a justification that I use frequently. It doesn't really have a nice name though. So I'm gonna find a double prime, use the second derivative test, see if I have a max or min and go from there. So to find the second derivative, I'm gonna go back to this derivative that I found. So I'm doing this because the second derivative is easy to find. If it was complicated to find, I would definitely use the first derivative test or the candidates test is another option, but then I'd have to like work out the dimensions uh, at the end point. I don't really wanna do that. So this is just negative one minus pi over four, which is definitely always less than zero. So the picture kind of looks like uh, we have a concave down thing. We know we have a horizontal tangent because uh, a prime is equal to zero. And therefore we are definitely looking at a maximum. So we've kind of justified it uh, as far as I need to, or in my mind in this video, uh, you might need to write out a sentence or something. Uh, either way, just do whatever the problem calls for. Uh, all right, so now I need to answer the actual question though. Find the dimensions of the window. So this is kind of annoying because the dimensions are kind of weird. Uh, so the dimensions, x we found is 60 over four plus pi. And then y, what I can do is um, go back to this thing, 30 minus x minus pi over two x over two. I'm not gonna make you uh, watch me simplify this, but it actually kind of simplifies surprisingly uh, into just 30 over four plus pi. So it's actually just half of x. Um, I don't know that there's a way to know that going into this problem. So you kind of have to do it anyway. And then r is uh, definitely just half of x, right? Because r is x over two. So r is going to be 30 over four plus pi as well. So as with a lot of optimization, there's something kind of square-ish about this problem, even though there's like a circle and whatever. Uh, okay, so if you remember, I said that when I chose x to be the dimension of the horizontal segment there, I might've made a poor choice. It's not really a bad choice. I mean, we, we solved it, it's not hard. Uh, or it's not terrible, I guess. Um, but I could have done something different. So what I could have done is I could have first chosen R. And then once I choose R, uh, kind of the same thing happens, except this, instead of being X, is now just two times R. And then this is Y. And then I'm not going to make you watch the entire thing here. But uh, our perimeter becomes 2Y plus 2R plus pi R equals 30. Um, and now we're trying to maximize the area, which is 2r times y, so that's horizontal times a vertical, and then plus still pi r squared over 2. Um, so there's only two variables. I can solve this for y. I can make a substitution um, and simplify it. So uh, you end up with this. So the 2s cancel, which is really nice. Like you have 2r y, and the 2 from the 2r cancels with the 2 in the denominator of y, which is kind of nice. This, uh, you can power rule to get this. You can set it equal to zero to get r is 30 over four plus pi, which if you remember is exactly what we got last time. And then if you wanna justify this, you can do a second derivative test as well. Um, so I just wanted you to know, like the choice that you make, it almost doesn't matter, but uh, as with almost every problem, making a better choice for the variable makes uh, everything a little bit easier. So the way I actually did it in the first part I don't think I made the best choice. I think the best choice is to really go with R first, then the horizontal is 2R, and then you kind of go from there. But either way, you'll get the answer. All right, so uh, I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.